so let us discuss about chemical properties of monosaccharides because monosaccharides are the simplest sugar units of carbohydrates and they do have free functional groups and these functional groups are responsible for the chemical properties okay so under chemical properties what are the reactions you can study one is furfural formation second one is enolization third one is oxidation fourth one is reduction and fifth one is osazone formation so furfural formation okay first one is furfural formation when glucose or any other monosaccharide treated with strong mineral acids like uh, mineral acids you can say uh, H2SO4, HCl, hydrochloric acid and uh, nitric acid okay all these like strong mineral acids okay there are like mild also so especially concentrated acids strong mineral acids so in the presence of these mineral acids carbohydrates undergo dehydration dehydration is nothing but removal of water molecules so you all know how you define a carbohydrate hydrates of carbon that means water molecule surrounded by a, i mean like a carbon surrounded by water molecule so when you treat this carbohydrate with strong acids okay it makes the carbohydrate dehydration okay and forms furfural derivatives okay and this formula is basis for two tests that is molis test and selenov test molis test is a identification test for carbohydrates the basic test whenever you will get a test sample if you want to identify carbohydrate okay you will have to perform molis test okay so with a molis test only you can identify carbohydrate irrespective of any carbohydrate whether it is a monosaccharide whether it is a disaccharide or polysaccharide all the carbohydrates will give positive to molis test and selenov's test is specific to fructose but the formula or the basis is same you see here whenever there is a formation of furfural okay you will get that purple colored ring okay purple colored ring dehydration is nothing but you see in the figure i am showing dehydration there is no hydroxyl groups all these hydroxyl groups removed as water molecules all this oh and hydrogens removed as water molecules okay so when glucose treated similarly with the concentrated acids it forms hydroxymethyl furfural and this hydroxymethyl furfural condenses with phenolic compounds okay and forms colored complex okay this colored complex is nothing but that ring furfural ring so enolization or tautomerization okay when glucose kept in alkaline solution for several hours it undergoes isomerization to form d fructose and mannose so this what uh, that's what i was telling before kilian synthesis okay when glucose treated with a mild alkalis okay it can form fructose and mannose the only the thing is the difference between glucose and fructose in the first two carbons right in the first two carbons here c so this is glucose and the second one is fructose uh, i am drawing ketose group is a functional group here d fructose okay so both glucose and fructose having same structural formula mannose is also having same structural formula but glucose and mannose in epimerism we have discussed glucose and mannose are c2 epimer the c2 epimer of glucose is mannose they differ only in the second carbon so here fructose is also differing in the second carbon first two carbons okay so there is only the difference here in the first two carbons if i rearrange the hydrogens or oxygen from the first carbon to second carbon okay first carbon to second carbon they will form fructose and mannose but not directly through an intermediate that is known as enediol okay enediol is a strong reducing substance which gives positive for benedict's test okay this is the reason behind 
Benedict says that means reducing substances. If a carbohydrate, if you want to know a particular carbohydrate is reducing one or not, you should perform a Benedict's test. Okay. And this Benedict's test surely answered by all the monosaccharides because all monosaccharides like glucose, fructose uh, and uh, mannose or galactose all are reducing in nature and they definitely give positive for Benedict's test. And this Benedict's test is positive through a formation of a compound that is NADOL. Okay. This NADOL carries the strong reducing properties that means you see here the transfer of hydrogen the transfer of hydrogen okay from glucose to the first carbon making a NADOL and making a double bond between C1 and C2 okay and this NADOL can form fructose by accepting one more hydrogen from the NADOL to form fructose similarly this NADOL transfer okay hydrogen from first carbon I mean second carbon okay and forming mannose so all these are interconvertible sugars okay this is known as tautomerization interconversion of sugars in the presence of alkali is known as tautomerization so that's what i was talking about benedict's test you see here different colors are there colorful uh, test tubes in the picture you are seeing here okay as i mentioned nadls are the good reducing agents okay and this reducing property useful in testings like Benedict's test and Felling's test. Okay, Felling's test is also one of the test for fructose. Okay, why? Because fructose uh, being a reducing substance, it will answer the Felling's test. The basis behind the Benedict's test or Felling's test is the solution or the reagent, Benedict's reagent contains copper sulfate. Okay, this copper sulfate breaks down to copper uh, molecules in the presence of copper oxide. Okay, copper oxide. And this copper or uh, cuprous ions convert to cupric ions. Double means cuprous, single plus means cupric. Okay, this NADOL converts cuprous ion to cupric ions. This cupric ions mixed with the water molecules of the monosaccharide and forms cuprous hydroxide. This hydro uh, cuprous hydroxide when get heated converts to cuprous oxide. Okay, this cuprous oxide is red in color. So you can see in the picture, okay, the red color test tubes, okay, brick red precipitate is there, right? Blue indicates copper sulfate, okay, that indicates absence of reducing sugars. Brick red indicates completely presence of um, reducing monosaccharides. There is a color variation, green to orange, okay, yellowish green, yellow orange, or brick red, okay, depending upon the concentration. And okay the color will change but blue converting into green yellow whatever okay it is indicating positive okay if it is not turning into any color staying blue color that means there is no reducing substance in the solution so coming to the oxidation or sugar acid formation when glucose oxidizes under proper conditions okay it forms aldonic acid aldaric acid and uronic acid okay three types of acids it can form based on which carbon involved in the reaction if first carbon is involving in the reaction it forms aldonic acid okay if other other than first carbon other carbons are involving it forms aldehydic acid if last penultimate carbon bottom carbon involves in the oxidation it forms uronic acids that is example glucuronic acid so you see here when the first carbon Okay, when you when glucose treated with hypobromous acid, it undergo oxidation at first carbon, it forms COOH. Okay, it forms COOH that is known as gluconic acid. Okay, why I'll tell you the medical importance of this gluconic acid, calcium gluconate. Okay, this injection serves as source of calcium. Okay, if any patient is having low levels of calcium, okay, the low levels of calcium is a disorders condition. Okay. To treat that patient, we can give calcium gluconate. Calcium directly we cannot give. In assistance with some carbohydrate only we can give because it can easily transport it in the circulation. Okay, calcium gluconate, it can inject IV through IV which maintains the calcium levels. Okay, formation of glucosaccharic acid. Okay, that means when you treat again nitric acid, okay, both first and six carbon, both carbons will undergo oxidation to form glucosaccharic acid COOH and COOH. Now 
uronic acid that means enzymatic reaction in the body suppose okay that's what when penultimate carbon undergo oxidation and by enzymatic reaction it forms glucuronic acid the importance of glucuronic acid we have already seen okay so this glucuronic acid is a part of so many heteropolysaccharides and in glycoproteins and the major contribution of this glucuronic acid uh, in the body in detoxification reactions i.e. conjugation mechanism of bilirubin metabolism and certain drugs conjugation mechanisms also glucuronic acid involved. So coming to the reduction property okay when both aldoses ketoses reduced by enzymes to corresponding polyhydroxy alcohols when because these are ketoses and aldoses right aldehyde group and ketose group is there so when they are treated by enzyme they converted to corresponding polyhydroxy alcohols that means the sugar alcohols they function mainly as intermediates in minor pathways of carbohydrate metabolism minor pathways in the sense fructose metabolism is there okay galactose metabolism is there right so in these metabolisms these polyhydroxy alcohols serves as a key intermediates okay they are all not major they are all minor pathways okay some of the alcohols like sorbitol mannitol dulcitol and ribitol that means glucose and fructose can convert it to sorbitol mannose can be converted to mannitol fructose can be converted to uh, again sorbitol okay ribose can be converted to ribitol so see here glucose mannose fructose galactose ribose all these are aldehyde forms and fructose is a ketose form so sorbitol mannitol again sorbitol dulcitol and ribitol all these are alcoholic forms so the medical importance here to mention mannitol is an osmotic diuretic which reduces the cerebral edema because what, what to do uh, mannitol is a uh, water grabbing one so in case of any water uh, accumulation in the brain okay if you inject a mannitol okay through IV so it clears the cerebral edema and sorbitol in case of cataract you, you all know and with the age there is a, uh, a poor visibility I mean like uh, because of this cataract this cataract is nothing but a white color plaque in the cornea okay or retina which obstructing the vision okay it's because of accumulation of sorbitol sorbitol is also a water grabbing okay water attractive compound which is the reason behind formation of cataract and swelling of the eye or especially retina of the eye coming to the last property osazone formation okay all the reducing sugars give positive to this vosazone formation. Reducing sugars means all the monosaccharides are reducing in nature. Glucose is a reducing sugar, fructose is a reducing sugar, galactose is a reducing sugar and mannose is also a reducing sugar. But mannose mainly involved in heteropolysaccharide formation, okay, in the other form. The presence of free carbonyl group in the molecule is essential. Whether it is aldose or ketose, the free carbonyl group is the reason behind this vosazone formation. Okay, as I mentioned, all the monosaccharides involved in the osazone formation and few disaccharides involved in the osazone formation. Okay, why I have mentioned few? Because we have disaccharides, sucrose is there, maltose is there, lactose is there. Okay, so out of these three, only maltose and lactose can give osazone positive, not the sucrose. Because they don't have any free carbonyl group sucrose when we are talking about uh, disaccharides i will tell why sucrose is not uh, forming osazones and why they don't have any free carbonyl group okay uh, osazones are yellow crystalline substances okay when these monosaccharides or disaccharides treated with phenylhydrazine compound okay the first two reaction uh, first two carbons only involved in the reaction okay here you can see here glucose when treated with phenylhydrazine okay it will react with the first carbon of glucose okay it forms glucohydrazone and again treatment of phenylhydrazine to glucohydrazone it form it uh, reacts with second carbon and it forms osazone that means phenylhydrazine mainly reacting with the first uh, two carbons i mean like uh, whether it is a glucose whether it is a fructose whether it is a galactose whether it is a lactose whether it is a um, uh, maltose it is reacting only with the first two carbons okay so the type of needle shaped crystals what it forms glucosazone that means 
glucosazone yellow color crystals i can say you see here glucosazone needle shape crystals same way fructose is also having needle shape crystals okay or broomstick shaped okay broomstick shape or needle shape crystals when you are talking about maltosa zone okay it is sunflower petals you all have seen the sunflower right so all like sunflower petals and when you are talking about lactosa zone it is powder puff you see here so the first one is glucosa zone and second one is powder puff okay cotton ball or cotton uh, cotton ball or powder puff shaped and when you are talking about maltosa zone it is sunflower petal shaped okay sunflower petal so with this we can identify okay what type of uh, uh, carbohydrate present in the solution if osa zone showing needle shaped crystals under microscope okay you can say this uh, particular solution okay uh, phenyl hydrogen test i'll tell you how to perform first you have to take a solution carbohydrate solution you have to add phenyl hydrogen uh, phenyl hydrogen okay and you have to boil for some time okay depends okay for monosaccharides they will quickly react for disaccharides it will take time more than 10 minutes it will take so you allow to cool the solution for some time this when you allow it to cool there is crystal forms yellow color crystals you take the yellow color crystals on the slide okay glass slide okay and on the glass slide you can cover up with the cover slip okay and illuminate under a microscope electron uh, illuminate under a microscope okay so under microscope if you see these crystals okay if it is needle shape crystals you can confirm that is a um, glucose okay for fructose also same needle shape i'll tell you why glucose and fructose both are showing same needle shape crystals okay and if it is a lactose zone you will get cotton ball or powder puff shape crystals if it is a maltose zone or maltose you can see sunflower petals okay with this you can confirm and now why glucose and fructose both are uh, showing same needle shape crystals why the difference between glucose and fructose lies in the first two carbons okay the difference between glucose and Okay, you see here the difference between glucose and fructose lies in the first two carbons. And in the reaction, we have seen already in the reaction, phenyl hydrogen reacting with reacting with the first two carbons. That means it is masking. Okay, it is masking. So if masking is happening, the rest of the structure is same. So that is the reason. there is the difference between glucose and fructose lies in the first two carbons and this phenyl hydrogen reacting with the first two carbons it is masking the first two carbons so that's why glucose and fructose are showing same needle shape crystals so that is the significance of osa zone test